characteristics. There is no birth, no cessation. There is no impurity and no purity. There is no decrease, no increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no perception, no formation, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, body, no mind, no appearance, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no dharmas, no eye datu up to no mind datu, no datu of dharmas, mind consciousness datu, no ignorance, no end of ignorance up to no old age and death, no end of old age and death, no suffering, no origin of suffering, no cessation of suffering, no path, no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, since the Bodhisattvas have no attainment, they abide by means of Prajnaparamita. Since there is no obscuration of mind, there is no fear. They transcend falsity and attain complete nirvana. All the Buddhas of the three times by means of Prajnaparamita fully awaken to unsurpassable, true, complete enlightenment. Therefore, the great mantra of Prajnaparamita, the mantra of great insight, the unsurpassed mantra, the unequaled mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering should be known as truth since there is no deception. Prajnaparamita mantra is said in this way, Te Ata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasangate Bodhisoha. Thus Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train the profound Prajnaparamita. Then the Blessed One arose from that samadhi and praised Noble Avogateshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Good, good, O son of noble family, thus it is, O son of noble family, thus it is. One should practice the profound Prajnaparamita, just as you have taught, and all the Tathagatas will rejoice. When the Blessed One had said this, Venerable Shariputra and Noble Avogateshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, that whole assembly in the world with its gods, humans, asuras, and gandharvas rejoiced and praised the words of the Blessed One. Kala. <laughs> Shandarasa Maraya Mede Ata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasangate Buddhiso Baba Gonjo Sanji Gaye de Medoji Shea Badoji Mepadoji Shea Badoji Dragi Baji Medom Beju Tanji Shea in Korea So Ere and John Jaji Juji Wada the fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers. Adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon, I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. Holy Lamas high, wrap the sky of your Dharma bodies in massive clouds of knowledge and love, and let them pour upon the earth of your disciples as we shower brain, the teachings deep and wide.
Send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. Idam Guru Radha Mandala Gauni Radha Yami Sanji Yadan Jodi Yadam La Yanju Badu Dani Yazu Di Nagi Jini Yibizo Nam Di Nrola Benjil Zanji Rubar Yada So today uh, we find the beginning of uh, Sakadawa. Uh, so this is the time of Sakadawa. So any uh, virtue uh, is increased during this time. Uh, so uh, so, on the Tibetan calendar, we say it's from the first uh, day to the fifteenth day, uh, but we can say yine, that say chi than junga, thene. So it says that the, the first through the fifteenth are the greatest days of this. this uh, uh, um, du Chen means great festival, but just great, this great day. So these are the most important days uh, um, of this great month, rather. So the 15th of the month is when we celebrate the Buddha's uh, birth, enlightenment, and passing into Nirvana. So the 15th on the Tibetan calendar. Uh, but it begins, the, Saka Dawa means the month of the Buddha. So the, this month begins, and the most important days begin on the 1st and then ending on the 15th. And then the 15th is the day of the celebration of the birth, nirvana, and enlightenment. So just for clarification of the whole uh, points, all the points. <coughs> so, in during this time, uh, uh, it is stated that there is a great virtuous increase, and if one uh, isn't able to accumulate virtue uh, very readily or easily during this time, one is able to accumulate vast amounts of virtue, and one's virtue is increased. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so it's because of, of this that it's important when we uh, hear the explanation of the Dharma uh, uh, and listen to it during this time. Uh, it's very, uh, um, uh, uh, very good. So very good to, to listen to uh, and explain the Dharma during this time. So 
Then Okay, then in long long rasa, then tambo the the jipo chungo dan jipo din, nipa jipo chembo, then sumba. Nipa sumba jipo chembo jana. Nipa dan sumba, tambo chungo dan din. I think. Okay. Uh, so when we speak of the turnings of the wheel of uh, Buddha, uh, we, we are speaking of the first turning of the wheel of Dharma, the second turning of the wheel of Dharma, and the third turning of the wheel of Dharma. Uh, so when we look at the, the, um, um, uh, the contents of Atisha's lamp for the path to enlightenment, uh, we find that all of these are presented in here. And we find in the quote, uh, at the beginning of Atisha's Lamp for the Path to Enlightenment, uh, if I forgot anything, I apologize, we find at the quote in the beginning of Atisha's Lamp for the Path to Enlightenment, it says, understand that there are persons of three capacities, small, middling, and great. I shall write clearly identifying their characteristics. And if we look to what the root uh, of the... Um, um, uh, Atisha's lamp for the path to enlightenment is, we would find it in the Abhisama Alamkara. So the Abhisama Alamkara and its eight chapters are what uh, the Atisha's lamp for the path to enlightenment uh, is said to uh, be uh, the major text of. So the Abhisama Alamkara being the root, so the, uh, the ornament for clear realization being the root of Atisha's lamp for the path to enlightenment. And the ornament for clear realization contains eight chapters. Uh, and those eight chapters contain the meaning. And if we go to the beginning of, Mat of uh, uh, Maitreya's Ornament for Clear Realization, we find an introductory stanza that says, uh, um, uh, that which uh, uh, it begins with uh, homage, uh, translator's homage. So, okay, so it begins with, that which through the exalted knower of all leads hearers in seeking pacification to peace, which through the exalted knower of paths causes those helping migrators, uh, migrating beings to achieve the aims of the world, and through the perfect possession of which the subduers set forth these varieties having all aspects. To the mothers of the Buddhas as well as the host of hearers and bodhisattvas I pay homage. Uh, so we find here, when we go back to that first uh, stanza. It says, that which through the exalted knower of all leads hearers seeking pacification to, to peace. We could say that the, uh, um, that line uh, encompasses or contains the teaching shared in common with beings of small capacity and the teaching shared in common for beings of medium capacity. Uh, then when we get to the second and third line, we see 
which through the exalted knower of paths causes those helping migrating beings to achieve the aims of the world. Here this is uh, um, referring to the teachings for beings of great capacity and then and through the perf perfect possessions of which the subduers set forth these varieties having all aspects. So these second two lines are referring to the great vehicle teachings, the teachings for beings of great capacity. Uh, and then this second line uh, within that category, we find uh, the excellent qualities of the Buddha, the perfect possessions uh, being presented, and then uh, uh, this also referring to uh, the rest of, of this Mahayana or great vi vehicle uh, capacities. And through the perfect possessions of which the subduers set forth these varieties having all aspects. Uh, so the first line referring to the uh, small teaching shared in common with beings of small and medium capacity, and then the second part uh, before the homage uh, um, uh, uh, to uh, the uh, um, teachings for beings of great capacity. <laughs> Uh, so we find uh, there are many explanations of this uh, uh, commentary, uh, 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 the ornament for clear realizations, um, but we find the major commentary by uh, uh, Hari Bhadra uh, and the main commentary, uh, the commentary clarifying the meaning. Uh, of the or, uh, ornament of clear realizations, a treatise of oral instruction on the perfection of wisdom. So we find Hari Bhadra's uh, commentary to be the, uh, one of the major present commentaries. Sengizam, okay. And we find uh, the, within that uh, the many of the meanings of the conjure and tanjure uh, presented. Some so, when looking at uh, the explanation of Atisha's lamp for the path to enlightenment, uh, we find it in the Lama Tsongkhapa's great treatise on the stage of the path to enlightenment. Uh, and it begins uh, with uh, how to rely upon the teacher that is the root of the path, uh, and then the next part is how students train their minds after uh, having relied upon the teacher. Uh, and then under that category, we find an exhortation to take full advantage of a life of leisure and opportunity. Uh, and then a next category of how to take full advantage of a life of leisure and opportunity. Uh, so when, when we move on uh, to the how to take advantage of a life of leisure and opportunity, we find that there are three points that are made. Training the mind in the stage of the past shared in common with beings of small capacity, training the mind in the stage of the past shared in common with beings of medium capacity, and training the mind in the stage of the path for beings of great capacity. Uh, the first category, training the mind in the stage of the past shared in common with beings uh, of small capacity, we find first the actual training of thought of a person of small capacity. Second, the uh, measure of the training of thought of a person of small capacity or the measure of the attitude of a person of small capacity. Uh, and then third, uh, dispelling any misconceptions about a person of small capacity. So that first category, the uh, actual training of thought of a person of small capacity, has two categories. First, developing a state of mind that strives diligently for the sake of future lives. And then secondly, relying on a means for achieving happiness in one's ne next life. So the method for achieving happiness. So under the category of the method for achieving happiness, 
uh, we find two points. Uh, developing, uh, I'm sorry, uh, going for refuge, the entrance uh, or gateway into the excellent instruction, uh, and then developing faith and conviction in karma and its results. So the first category, uh, which is refuge, has four, four points that are made. First, uh, the, the causes of going for refuge. Secondly, based on that, the objects to which you go for refuge to. Uh, third, how to go for refuge. And then fourth, the advice on going for refuge or the precepts of refuge. So we're in the section uh, dealing with the precepts uh, of refuge. Uh, so if everybody wants to turn to uh, the section on that, um, uh, we are on page... The section on the precepts of refuge begin on uh, 192. Um, but we just, pr we just went through uh, the section uh, dealing with uh, uh, um, the, <clears throat> the, the general precepts uh, and, and, the com and the common precepts. So we went over already the, that which is to be abandoned uh, and then that which is under the specific precepts or the uh, sp um, specific, pre the special, uh, specialized or specific precepts. So we have uh, uh, the precepts or the advices on what to uh, do and what not to do. Uh, and, and then uh, and the next section deals with the common or the general precepts. So that's the section that we're dealing with right now. Uh, so beginning with the specific precepts of what to do and what not to do, or what not to do and what to do in that order. Uh, and then now we're in the, the general precepts section. So we're on page 196 in the English. Mm. <laughs> Bless uh, so, when we go back to uh, the stages of the precepts or the uh, stages of advice section, there are two uh, categories. First, how they appear in the compendium of determinations, and then secondly, how they appear in the oral tradition. Uh, so, we went over uh, the two categories um, uh, or the two sets of subdivisions uh, according to the compendium of determinations. Uh, and then we find how they appear in the oral tradition. So, and the oral tradition deals with the specific precepts or the specific advices and then the, those in common or those advices in common. Uh, so the specific or special uh, precepts uh, section begins with a quote uh, from the great final Nirvana Sutra that says, those who go to refuge uh, go to the three jewels for refuge, come closer to the truly virtuous. They never go to other deities for refuge. Those who go to the sublime teaching for refuge harbor no, no 
harbor no harmful, murderous thoughts. Those who go to the community for refuge do not associate with non-Buddhist philosophers. Uh, so we find uh, what not to, this section of what not to do, the proscriptive precepts, uh, we find within this quote, uh, the, the advice is related to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. The first whole stanza referring to the advice is related to the Buddha of uh, not, never going to other deities for uh, refuge. Um, and then the second uh, dealing with uh, um, uh, the um, Dharma jewel, uh, those who go to the sublime teaching for refuge harbor no, harbor no harmful murderous thoughts. Uh, so this is the advice not to harm or bring harm to any other sentient being. Uh, and then the, the advice related to the uh, Sangha jewel, or those aspiring to virtue jewel, those who go to the community for refuge do not associate with non-Buddhist philosophers. Uh, so we've gone over the meaning of these lines, uh, and these are the things uh, um, of, of, of what uh, not to do. Uh, and then the what to do precept section uh, begins with a, a, a quote, um, from a uh, letter to a friend by uh, Master Nagarjuna. It says, Just as the learned worship an image of the Sugata, whatever is made of, of even wood. Uh, so here, uh, this is showing that whatever uh, um, um, an, a, a holy object is made of, uh, whether it's made of gold or, or wood or, or, or earth, uh, one should respect it uh, and make offerings to it uh, and not see any of the images of having a difference. Uh, so worship them all equally. Uh, so make offerings no matter what they're made of. Uh, so here um, it, it says that uh, one should respect and make offerings to them uh, and so forth. And then the next point that's made is, and this is related to the Dharma jewel, of uh, what to do. The next advice is related to the, uh, I'm sorry, this is related to the Buddha jewel. The next is related to the Dharma jewel. Uh, and that uh, uh, point is made that uh, any four words uh, of, of scripture uh, should be looked at as the real Dharma jewel itself. It should not be put in any kind of dirty place. Uh, it should be honored. It shouldn't be put anywhere dishonorable uh, and so forth. So these are the advices related to the Dharma jewel. So the first just to, for clarification, advice is related to the Buddha jewel, uh, seeing all images, no matter what they're made of, is equal and making offerings and respecting them. And then advice related to the Dharma jewel, any four words of the Dharma should be looked at as the actual Dharma jewel in itself and respected. And then the advice related to the Sangha jewel is referring to not despising or being disrespectful to any among the community of, of monks or nuns. Uh, so those robed individuals. Uh, so uh, being respectful uh, is the advice of what to do related to the Sangha jewel in this section. Mulubi Passant Japanese 
Buddha uh, it's important for us to not uh, make negative remarks about it, not to say that its shape is not good or uh, that uh, it, it's uh, dark color or, or to make negative statements about it. Um, and we find uh, in the story um, from the exegesis of discipline um, where uh, there is the story of the uh, Mana Va Kapila, um, who made disparaging remarks to the uh, community of learners and those with no more to learn. Uh, and we find this in the um, uh, previous activities of the Buddha uh, in a, a text that has a hundred previous stories. I, there's a better exact name for it, but there's a text that has a hundred of the previous stories of the Buddha. Uh, and this is the fourteenth among uh, the stories. Uh, and, and this shows how uh, um, I'll do, Rinpoche did it two ways, so it, I'll do the, both of them together, which encompasses the whole story. Uh, so when we look at this text in the, num the f number 14th story, uh, we find um, a more, uh, um, more information about uh, this story or point that's put in, in the great treatise on the stage of the path. Uh, so the summary is that uh, um, this uh, um, uh, man, uh, Manava Kapila, uh, made disparaging remarks to the learners and the non-learners, uh, and that as a result, uh, and he called them various different uh, um, names. Uh, you are a, a, um, a horse's head, you are an elephant head, you are a, um, a, a um, dog's head, uh, etc., etc. Um, so he made these disparaging remarks uh, to them, and then was reborn uh, as a uh, sea monster with uh, 18 heads uh, because of making 18 different disparaging remarks, uh, and stayed that way from the time of uh, Lord Kashapa to Shakyamuni. Uh, so the reason that this was done, this uh, um, man was encouraged by his mother uh, to use this uh, style of saying negative things to the monks uh, because they wouldn't be able to respond in negative. Uh, so he said that, that she said that he could definitely win debates um, by calling the um, learners and non-learners names. Uh, so this is the reason. This was in, he was encouraged by his mother after having debated uh, many of the non-Buddhists uh, and other scholars. Uh, um, he went to um, uh, debate the learners and non-learners uh, and was encouraged to, with the strategy by his mother to call them names. Um, and so after he had done this, uh, he uh, um, felt a great regret. Um, so after he had slandered the community and said these things and, and called them 18 different names, he felt a, a sense of regret and stayed uh, with the, the monks. Uh, and. Um, it's said that if you look at the way that virtue uh, and non-virtue gives rise to results, uh, the greatest amount of non-virtue gives rise to rebirth in the hell realm, a medium amount of non-virtue gives rise to rebirth in the hungry ghost realm, and a small degree of non-virtue gives rise uh, in the animal realm to rebirth. And because of the regret uh, that he had for having slandered the community uh, and the studies that he engaged in uh, until he died, his karma was uh, lessened. Uh, and instead of giving rise to the greatest amount of negativity, a rebirth in the hell realm, he was born uh, as this fish, as an animal, um, and then was uh, um, blessed by Lord Shakyamuni Buddha 
to be able to explain uh, why uh, he had um, um, uh, reaped these benefit, or reaped these uh, results, or what these, why these results occurred, uh, and was able to state that it was as a result of having uh, slandered uh, the community of learners and non-learners in 18 different ways. Uh, so we find this story uh, and how it relates to the importance of not disparaging images and so forth. Dixon. <laughs> Uh, so in this this 14th story, uh, I'm not sure if it's the Jataka Tales or not, but if, I don't want to say that because I'm not sure. Um, in this 14th story, uh, uh, we find uh, the, the um, uh, a fisherman catches uh, this fish with 18 heads, uh, and then a crowd of people gather uh, to see uh, this monster. Uh, the, with the 18 different heads. And Buddha, uh, <coughs> uh, and Buddha blesses the mind of the sea creature uh, so that it's able uh, to speak in the human language uh, and asks, what is the cause? Uh, at, Buddha asks to, to the uh, sea creature, what is the cause uh, of this rebirth that you've had? Uh, and then he related the story of how he disparaged and said negative things uh, to the community in 18 different ways, and as a result, he was born as this fish with 18 different heads resembling the 18 names of the animals that he called the learners, a community of learners and non-learners. Uh, and then uh, the Buddha said, who is your teacher? Uh, um, uh, who is your teacher? Uh, and he said, my mother. Uh, he said, my mother uh, encouraged me to do this. This was her wish. Um, I didn't have, pre pre prior to that, have this wish to do this, but my mother encouraged me. Uh, to do so. Uh, so this is why she was my teacher. And uh, then the Buddha said, where is your mother now? Uh, and the blessing uh, that the Buddha was able to give the sea, sea monster's mind, he was able to say specifically where his mother had been born. And he said, my mother is in hell. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so then uh, this uh, um, um, sea creature with the 18 heads um, uh, um, uh, went for refuge uh, to the Buddha. Uh, and then when he passed away, he was born as a god. Uh, so we find in this text many of the uh, previous stories um, of the um, uh, Buddha. In, in the pronouncements within it. Pronoun the Buddha's pronouncements within it. Okay, so now, okay, so now we go to the uh, common precepts. Those uh, precepts that are in common, or the general precepts. Page 196. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Chin 
so first we look at the outline of the general precepts and we find it on 196. There are six general precepts. By recalling the distinctions and good qualities of the three jewels, go for refuge again and again. By recalling the great kindness of the three jewels, strive to worship them constantly and offer the first portion of your food and drink. Establish other living beings in practice by considering them with compassion. Whatever activity you engage in, whatever your purpose, make offerings and supplications to the three jewels, forsaking any other worldly methods. After you have understood the benefits, go for refuge three times in the day and three times at night. Uh, maintain your refuge and do not forsake the three jewels, e even uh, in jest or if it costs your life. Uh, so these are the, this is the outline, and then Lama Tsongkhapa will go into greater detail about this outline uh, after this. Uh, so, when we then begin with the um, first uh, of the general precepts, or those precepts in common, it says, Be, by recalling the distinctions and good qualities of the three jewels, uh, go for refuge uh, again and again. Uh, um, so here, uh, this first line begins with by recalling the distinctions. Uh, so if we look at the great treatise on the stage of the path to enlightenment where we previously uh, went, uh, we find that there are the distinctions. There are six specific distinctions. The distinction based on definition, distinction based on enlightened activities, ba uh, distinction based on devotion, distinction based on practice, distinction based on recollection, and distinction based on the increase of merit. Uh, so here, uh, this word distinctions uh, goes over what the differences are. Uh, so how do we define uh, the, each among the three jewels? Uh, and what, what are the differences of, of them? It says, and good qualities of the three jewels. So good qualities, we find that uh, if we look at Maitreya's sublime continuum in the commentary, uh, we used it to explain it. Uh, we find, uh, just as a note, we previously used penchant sanandrap as general meaning of perfection. Uh, we find that there are eight excellent qualities that are uh, um, found uh, related to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and then we find them each defined 
uh, in the sublime continuum uh, individually. Uh, so we find the definition of the Buddha, the definition of the Dharma, and the definition of the Sangha uh, jewel in the sublime uh, continuum. Uh, so within these distinctions, we find all of that information. Uh, the, uh, the six points that were made, and within that, uh, we find this definition of the Buddha jewel. So the Buddha jewel is defined as the essence uh, of the Buddha, it possesses the two sets of meaning, uh, which encompasses ability, compassion, exalted wisdom, exalted of, uh, wisdom of others' conditions, spontaneity, and unconditioned. Uh, and then the Dharma jewel is defined as, the Dharma is defined as that which is uh, possessing the two truths free from desires, an antidote, lucid, pure, non-conceptual, non-dual, and incontrovertible. Uh, and then the definition of the Sangha jewel being the intelligent, irreversible assemblage, possessing the highest excellent qualities, pure, perceiving reality and diversity throughout exalted wisdom. So we previously went over the meaning of, of those points found in the sublime continuum. Uh, so we're, by recalling the distinctions, is referring to uh, all of the um, points made about the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And then when we look at this word distinctions, we can look at it in a debate context or uh, from a uh, um, dialectical uh, context. So we say, what is the difference between the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha? So when we compare any among these two, do we find that there are three permutations, four permutations? Are they mutually exclusive uh, or are they synonymous? Do they have one meaning? Uh, so then we compare these subjects by way of this uh, four possibilities, three possibilities, four possibilities, mutually exclusive uh, and synonymous. And we figure out when we compared what category among these four do they fall into. Uh, so then this is a, a way that we recall the distinctions. Um, uh, so uh, there are, are many points that are made uh, within this. We find distinctions and then good qualities, good qualities uh, um, falling under those eight qualities we went over previously. And it says go for refuge again and again by relying on these points. Dixon. What do you want? Conscious <laughs> Nabi,天巴的出的,是不是天巴的出马的是的话。那你拿米天巴的出,你的不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不是,是不
it makes the point and then gives the commentary, then makes the point. So we have this outline in the English. Uh, so it goes from one, uh, and then it, it, in the Tibetan, starts the commentary. Uh, um, uh, so just as a, a note, it took me a minute to figure out what was happening here. Um, but the, um, the commentary begins right after the first point. Um, so this is a, a added for ease. Um, but in the, in the Tibetan, we find the first point, uh, and then it's commentary over here. Uh, and I'm sure it'll keep, keep going then in this way and then get to the next point. And uh, I'm sure that's what we'll, we'll do. Um, so uh, it says, you should keep in mind the differences between non-Buddhist and Buddhist, the distinctions among the three jewels and the good qualities of the three jewels. So we found uh, the, in that section of uh, um, uh, going for refuge by uh, uh, um, not um, acknowledging other uh, refuges. Um, and so we've learned what the difference between the Buddhist teacher teaching uh, and student is. So in that section, uh, we went over um, all those points uh, and, and why the, the teaching of the Buddha is Dharma and the Buddha is the teacher. So uh, by refusing to acknowledge other refuges section, we found uh, those points uh, um, that are made. Um, uh, so this between non-Buddhist and Buddhist, this was previously gone over. Um, so you repeatedly keep in mind these differences uh, and distinctions uh, and the excellent qualities. Um, so, when we uh, start to analyze uh, the jewels and we look at them in terms of three permutations, four permutations, uh, uh, mutually exclusive or synonymous, uh, we can begin to compare. So when we compare the Buddha jewel uh, and the Sangha jewel, we can say that there are uh, um, uh, uh, three possibilities. Uh, if it is the Buddha jewel, it is necessarily the Sangha jewel. If it's the Sangha jewel, it's not necessarily the Buddha jewel. There's something which is both Buddha Shakyamuni uh, uh, and then something which is neither. Uh, so then if we then compare the Dharma jewel and the Buddha jewel, we'll find if, if it's the Buddha, if it's the Dharma, so that was previously three permutations. When we get to the next point and we compare the Dharma jewel uh, and the Buddha jewel, we'll say that there are four permutations because if it is the Buddha jewel, it is not necessarily the Dharma jewel. If it's the Dharma jewel, it's not necessarily the Buddha jewel. There is something which is both the Dharma jewel and the Buddha jewel. The cessation, uh, true paths and cessations within the continuum of Buddha superiors, and then something which is neither. Uh, so we can compare these things and look at them in many different ways, um, uh, but we can look at them in this thorough fashion uh, uh, based on the comparison, comparing the two subjects and, and finding whether they fall categorically under three permutations, four permutations, mutually exclusive or synonymous. So then we find the differences, uh, you should repeatedly keep in mind the differences between uh, non-Buddhists and Buddhists. And then the distinctions among the three jewels, so we went over that. And then the good qualities of the three jewels. So then when we look at, for instance, the good qualities of the excellent qualities of the Buddha, the excellent qualities of the Buddha's body, speech, mind, and enlightened activity. So when we look at the excellent qualities of the um, uh, body of the Buddha, we find the uh, 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 major marks and signs. Uh, so the 32 major marks and 80 minor signs uh, and the excellent qualities of the uh, body of the Buddha. The next, uh, the excellent qualities uh, um, of the speech of the Buddha, uh, we find the ability for Buddha to, uh, if all sentient beings were to ask the Buddha uh, different questions in their own individual languages, the Buddha would, with one response, would be able to answer all of their questions simultaneously in the language that they understand. Uh, so this is the excellent quality of the Buddha's speech. Uh, and then the excellent quality of the Buddha's mind uh, refers to uh, um, the uh, state of omniscience uh, that the Buddha has. Uh, so the Buddha's mind is uh, omniscient or all-knowing. 
Uh, and then the excellent qualities of the Buddha's enlightened activities, there are two uh, qualities that it has. That first, that they are spontaneous, uh, um, uh, in, uh, occurring without effort. Uh, and then secondly, uh, everlasting, uh, always occurring. Uh, so the Buddha's enlightened activities are effortless and always occurring. Uh, so these are what, what is meant here. And then we find the excellent qualities related to all the three different jewels. This is related specifically to the, the Buddha. Uh, so this is what's meant here. Uh, repeatedly keeping these differences between non-Buddhists and Buddhists, the distinctions among the three jewels, and the excellent qualities of the three jewels. So all these points previously uh, explained. That's so then when we move, those are the excellent qualities of the Buddha. The next, the excellent qualities of the Dharma, we find a quote from the Dharma Sangiti the compendium of the teachings. It says, These Bhagavan Buddhas possess infinite, limitless good qualities. Such qualities are born from the teaching, from the proper practice of the teaching. The teaching creates and governs them. They arise from the teaching and are within the scope of the teaching. They depend upon the teaching and the teaching uh, produces them. Uh, so we, we find this excellent quality presented. Uh, and then within the sublime continuums definition, we find the eight excellent qualities uh, that are presented uh, within that. Point. And it says the pure truth in the continuum of superiors possessing excellent qualities among the eight, such as inconceivable, non-duality, non-conceptual. So this among the eight, uh, so that this truth, this dharma, has these excellent qualities which are among these eight. Uh, so uh, this is the point, and, and there are many other points that are made uh, about the dharma jewel's excellent qualities, but these are two such places where you find them in this quote. Uh, um, from the um, compendium of the teachings and then the quote from the sublime continuum uh, that, that speaks of those eight excellent qualities. Uh, and then the next point deals with the excellent qualities of, of, the, community, of the Sangha jewel. Uh, and then we find the excellent qualities of being free from conceptuality uh, because it is devoid of any kind of conceptual... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, let me try that again. The ac intelligent irreversible assemblage possessing the highest excellent qualities, pure perceiving reality and diversity through exalted wisdom. So the highest excellent qualities. Uh, so there are uh, many other points about these jewels that can be made. Papi lie in a chukon to him chow. And a good day in a chukon to him chow. Chukon to la, good day to la deni madu, Santa Gondua. And the Sanji conjures and the Sanji conjures da and the Yetemobil to much to Yetem Casa. Jetem Sanji, good you, the Sugi, the Tuji, the Teleju, the Pombi, the Tobi, and out the Mobil, the Marbe. Uh, so uh, there is a, a large amount of information to go through when you look at these small points that are being made. Uh, there is a, a vast amount of information. When we look at the uh, um, Sangha jewel, uh, those aspiring to virtue jewel, uh, those aspiring to virtue jewel are, are necessarily persons or beings. Uh, so if it is uh, those aspiring to virtue jewel, it is a person or a being. Um, and if we look at the categories of those, we would find uh, hearers, arias, uh, or hearer superiors, uh, solitary realizer arias or superiors, and bodhisattva arias or superiors, uh, and uh, um, Buddhist superiors. So we would find if we were to look at the categories of the um, uh, the community, uh, we would find those uh, superiors. <coughs> if we look at the categories 
uh, of, of the um, Dharma jewel, we would find them to be those realizations within the continuums of those superiors uh, of true paths and true cessations. Uh, so uh, if it is a Dharma jewel, it is necessarily uh, any among the true paths or cessations within the continuums of the hearer superiors, solitary realizer superiors, uh, bodhisattva superiors, uh, Buddha superiors. So uh, there's a lot of information to consider when we consider the points that are uh, being made here, looking at the, the good qualities of the three jewels uh, um, uh, and so forth, and we look at the excellent quality of the Buddha, uh, it says it's uh, the excellent quality of unconditioned, excellent quality of natural, the unconditioned excellent quality of natural purity, the excellent qualities of realization, the excellent qualities of, of, of caring and knowledge, etc. So there are many different <coughs> points that we go over related to excellent qualities uh, um, uh, about all of these jewels. So we'll take a short break. I need that. Tombo, Mugusi, Chaba, Tanya, and then Jesu Tembe, Yane, and the Chosu, and Nesa, Saji Tombro, Hashi, but the Shabatana Vichabat, or to see Woodwa, the soon happens with Chaba, Kunju, soon happens with Chaba. The Dagi, and then Saji Kunju, and then Chukunju, and then Genukunju, and then Mamsan Tanguaris, Saji Tambut, she true. Tanya. Cadinchamber to Zukna, Kunju Kunju Kadi is <laughs> love with Kunju Kadi. Kunju Kadi Kandaris. And then Asu may Lieutenant Tayu ten ton, and then Dawa ton, and the person to work in the law, and the Kunju Kadi Kandarisana, the Zukna law, and the Gog de Margo Goa. Gain de Bro. Goa de Goaina, a sheet you could tell him, Michel Marbe. Swanjigi. Ishichuku <laughs> Dubi Chubas, Ni Undua, and a garden chamber just to Tembe, Tutato, Chubala Tambas, Tatus at a Kadu, Judo, every time out of it, every time for it. Tunshi and the Zawat and Jayu Pichu Chubas, that was a sad to want to go low, or the Oma was in the Chilogen. Tridua <laughs> I don't know what to do with the law, and the drink of 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 Sanjil Chaba Mamid and Sanjil Tugu Tugu Marijib Ta. Sanjil Kuz Sonon Jai Chaba Re Sen Nyeng Res. Inna Chaba Mugu Yenna Ngaru Zul Kasan Yung Res. Tilla Sen Nyeng Chang 
Dalla Sheba Sheba Zoman Jurus. Sheba the Nazo Sosu Jewel, Sheba Lava Sheba. Nazo Pukuchu Jule, Sheba Lavrua. Pukuchu the Latin Pamaki Lavurma, Duhama Malana, Pugu and the Saha Kari and the Sagro, Tuan Karina Tunore, Lapa Malchangre, and the Pame the Majid, the Sagur, the Saju Malavrota. Then Najan Nazo Sosu Juk and Galo. And Sheba, who is not a visitor, Sanjig and the Maji, the Dendu Lare, the Gandu Lare, the Tabi Lare, the Kui Lare, or Tendis Lona Matu, not the Shaker Manager, or things of the Shebas. Tell us Sheba, Sheba Zoom and Sheba, Sheba Susu, you get the cutting chimney in Balakari, cutting Zogumaris, Sheba Zoom and Juro, Sheson Batar, Cousin between. Zala Kazinye Bitune Zala Dele Kanjun Tanji Kunju Tindo Sheba Shilaza Kazinye Bitune Kazinye Be Kazinye Be Tunes Kazin Kunju Negres Chuba Mabina Negres Pugina Susula Pentu Yungres Zala Dele Kanjun Tanji Conjugate <laughs> Uh, so this first point, uh, by recalling the distinctions and good qualities of the three jewels, go for record again and again, as previously explained, you should keep, you should repeatedly keep in mind the differences between non-Buddhist and Buddhist, the distinctions among the three jewels and the excellent qualities or good qualities of the three jewels. So that's the first point. The second point, by recalling the great kindness of the three jewels, strive to worship them constantly and offer the first uh, portion of your food uh, and drink. <coughs> Uh, so, all uh, uh, happiness <coughs> that we uh, achieve or experience is as a result of virtuous activities. Uh, and if there are virtuous activities, there are necessarily the enlightened activities of the exalted wisdom body. Uh, so the enlightened activities of the exalted wisdom body are present if there are virtuous activities uh, present. Um, so the great kindness of, of the three jewels uh, shows how uh, um, that all of the things, all temporary happiness and certain goodness, uh, this human basis of leisure, all of these, uh, hap all of this happiness is a result of uh, the enlightened activities of the exalted wisdom body because it's a result of virtue. Um, uh, so uh, it goes on uh, to read uh, from the King of Concentration Sutra that though they obtain food due to the Buddha's merit, I'm just going to read up to what Rinche read and then just pick through it. Though they obtain food th due to the Buddha's merit, the childish do not repay their kindness. Thus, knowing that uh, all the temporary happiness and certain goodness that you experience, symbolized by food, are due to the kindness of the three jewels, you should make offerings with the intention of uh, repaying their kindness. So the food it symbolizes this temporary happiness and certain goodness that is a result of the kindness of the three jewels. So all these things that we experience, uh, the food uh, and drink that we experience as a result of the kindness of the three jewels. Um, so here when we go back to the King of Concentration Sutra, it says, though they obtain uh, food due to the Buddha's merit, so the food is symbolic of the temporary happiness and certain goodness is an example of that. Um, that is a result of the, the Buddha's merit, uh, the excellent qualities of the Buddha, uh, specifically uh, uh, the uh, um, um, enlightened activities of the exalted wisdom body. Um, and then it says, the childish do not repay their kindness. So childish here uh, is referring to in ordinary beings. Um, so the word child is used um, because uh, a child uh, needs to listen to his or her parents. Um, if he or she doesn't, uh, they'll get sick or could die. This is what you can eat. This is what you cannot eat. Uh, so the child uh, relies upon uh, his or her parents. In the same way, ordinary beings rely on the Buddha 
uh, for um, instruction on uh, this is what you do to achieve rebirth in the, the higher realms. This is the pathway to the higher realms. This is the pathway to uh, nirvana or liberation. This is the pathway to complete Buddhahood. Uh, so we as ordinary beings don't know. Um, so we are like a child. Uh, so this word child is used and it symbolizes ordinary being. Uh, and. Uh, uh, um, uh, normal beings or ordinary beings. As a note, ordinary beings is those who are, are not Aryas. Uh, so uh, when we use that word sus susuju, that means not an Arya, certainly not an Arya. Uh, so uh, ordinary being here is referring to that. This word childish is referring to ordinary beings. Uh, and uh, the word child is used specifically because we are like a child, because we don't know any better and have to be guided. Um, so <clears throat> Here, uh, when uh, it says, thus knowing that all temporary happiness and certain goodness that you experience symbolized by food are due to the kindness of the three jewels, you should make offerings with the intention of repaying their kindness. So in thinking of, of their kindness and the relationship between our uh, um, temporary happiness and certain goodness, the things that we are enjoying, or the, the relationship between these, we should make offerings uh, of our uh, food and drink. Uh, so here it says constantly. So going back, strive to make <coughs> offerings or worship them constantly. Uh, um, so so it, all the time. So it's meaning constantly, meaning not sometimes, meaning always. Always offer the first part of your food and drink. Uh, so here, um, as a symbol of, of this kindness, uh, we are using this. So uh, as a wish to repay that, uh, we um, uh, are offering the first uh, food or first portion of our food or drink. So we do so uh, by um, saying the uh, syllables om, ah, hom three times and blessing the substance, whether it be our food or drink, uh, and then saying, I offer these to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha jewel. Uh, so this is what it means, uh, and do that always, all, every time. Uh, so this word constantly is obviously uh, means always, but it specifically is saying every time, all, all the time, every time. Uh, make, off, uh, um, strive to every time, always make this offering of the first part of your food and drink. Dixon. Uh, <coughs> Every <laughs> So then uh, it goes on, it says with regard to offerings, um, so the, these offerings are offerings that are um, constantly made uh, every time. And it says, regard to these, uh, there are two points. The actions of the offering, the actual actions, and then the attitudes. Uh, and then the first, so the actions are the actual f actions of making the offering. Uh, and then the attitudes are the motivation one should have when one is making the offering. Uh, um, um, so the first uh, point, the actions of the offering, has ten uh, points that are made in the great treatise on the stage of the path to enlightenment. So we find the actions of offering and the attitudes. The first of these include the following ten types. So it's on page 197 uh, in the English, uh, about midway down. We, we find the beginning of the first, you know, the ten offering, uh, the ten actions of offering. <laughs> Chuba <laughs> 
Sanji is going to be the same. Sanji is going to be the same. Sanji is going to be the same. Then you have to go to the same. Sanji is going to be the same. Mereka la coba wosa. Tapi ni bah cuci na cuti la coba. Cuti la coba ni, sanji ji, sanji ji sedo, cuti cuti sura coba wosa. Sanji kumpul tu bici tu, ni cuti sura coba asa. Cuti sura ni jenama mungkin je lah. Cuti tu lagu tu susu guna coba wosa. Ni ni je, cuma no ni je. Tapi Mengasuh tu coba nasi, tapi mengasuh tu coba tu sumpah je. Mengasuh tu coba tu, tapi ni orang yang ngompol lah, ngompol tu coba lah coba us. Sanji tu kau tahu, cedeh ni susu minyak tu nene, coba bawa tu lah, mengasuh tu coba segeris. Tapi ni Sanji tu kau tahu, cedeh tapi ni orang yang ngompol lah, ngompol tu coba lah coba us. Cedeh tahu Sanji kau ni tu tu nene. Coba bawa tu lah, ngasuh tu coba segeris, sumpah je. Ngasuh main bi coba ni, sanji nanti cuti, ngadu maju ba, maju ba lah, sanji dah cuti, tanji je, satu coba wosa. Ngasuh tu maju bi coba coba ni, sanji nanti cuti, mik matung ni, mik matung cuti yang guru, mik matung sanji yang guru, kuzu yang guru tu. Mingi matun, mingi matun yue sanjie dan ti yi chue den la ngon do maju ba la, ngon do maju ba la, matun wa jie rwa. Sanjie dan chue den tanji ji shi do, sanjie dan chue den tanji ji shi do, chue ban bi wa la, ngon do maju ba gun chue ba as. Jie ma rwa da jie, chue ba jie de zwa la kale kale jie na mara. Then he jie. Jenala mampu ire, that's kali kapu tu. Then ni dek. Tapi kamu tu kula coba rendu wa. Lesser, sebab kula coba tu sanji kuzung kula coba. Lesser. Cukup nan tamu tu show sana, tamu kula coba. Lesser. Kula coba tu sanji je. Lesser. Kuzung kula coba us. Lesser. Sanji je kuzung kula tu coba tu la kula coba segeris. Lesser. Cuiten la coba tu show sana, cuiten la coba ni sanji je seto, cuiten sur la coba us. Sanji kamu tu bici tu. अन्य चौथे ने चुबा, चौथे ने चुबा होते, चौथे ने चुबा साल कले जो नियर जो कले जो। The then the Donda the Sanjay Kopan two then N G K the 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 dead the Donda गारे निपा Sanjay Kopan two निपा तो Sanjay जी शेष तो जरूर हुआ Sanjay जी शेष तो जाऊँ तो Sanjay को मतो भी शेष तो चौथे ने सोला चुबा स तो ये तो लोग तेरा बजी तो इंजल करते तो Sanjay Kopan, what did you say? Sanjay Kopan, what did you say? Sanjay Kopan, what did you say? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So then, when we look at the offerings, it says there are two categories. With regard to offerings, there are two categories. The actions of offering and the attitudes. So the first of these include the following ten types. So the first is offering to, uh, to the Buddha's body, means offering to the actual Buddha's embodiment as a form. So making a, an actual offering uh, to the Buddha's form. Uh, so this is the first type of action related to offering. Uh, the second, offerings to the stupas, means offerings to stupas and the like for the sake of Buddhahood. Uh, here it says for the sake of Buddha. Um, and I was, that's, I was asking Rinpoche, looking at the Tibetan and the English, uh, and for the sake of Buddha is for the sake of, of have, you have a desire to become a Buddha. Um, so the, the, if once the, the Buddha uh, um, has passed uh, uh, into nirvana, uh, and then there one is, sees a, a, a stupa uh, and is making offerings to the uh, stupa, uh, then uh, this, in doing it for the sake of becoming a Buddha, then this is the second point. Um, uh, um, offerings to stupas, means making these offerings to stupas. Uh, and then uh, the third point, uh, offering to a perceived object, uh, means offering to the above mentioned two as they are manifest uh, to your own sensory faculties. Uh, so this is when uh, one is having a direct perception uh, uh, through one's sensory faculties. Uh, so this uh, um, perceived object, uh, then musum, 
Mulțum, mulțum, seama. Da, sunt bate, mă rog, sunt bate. Mulțum, seama, mulțum, cipa. Mulțum. Te ni raghi, ombala, mulțum, do, ceba la, ceba os. Mulțum, do, ceba z, mulțum, do, ceba z, canegi, sunt vari zna, mulțum, do, ceba ne. Te ni zna, sunt aici, cu ta, ce te ni, mm-hmm. raghi, ombala, mulțum, do, ceba la, ceba os. Sunt aici, cu ta, ce te suru, mic tu. Mingi tu nu mă sunt de ceva la, ceva mi-a luat la, te nu mă sunt de ceva la, ceva să crezi. So then the, uh, it says here, it says, so when they don't become manifest to your own sensory, fa- uh, when they become manifest to your own sensory faculties. So this is here uh, stating that when one directly perceives them, uh, uh, either of the two, so uh, the image of the Buddha's body, uh, um, or or the uh, the stupa itself so if one is having a direct perception i was just making sure that the word uh, uh, direct cognition but it's not the word for direct valid cognition so it's just direct cognition but it's not say in the tibetan it doesn't say direct valid cognition so just a direct perception but not a direct prime cognition a direct valid cognition so i'm just just making the words distinguished uh, so it, just perceiving them directly uh, and, and through one's own sensory faculties so this is the second point and then the third the, uh, the third point rather the fourth point offerings to a non perceived object refers to offerings made to a Buddha or his stupas that are not actually present and made uh, for the sake of all Buddhas and stupas. Uh, so here, uh, this is when one's sensory faculties are not observing uh, or perceiving uh, these images. One is doing so without the um, um, medium of an actual image. Uh, so then this becomes offering to a non-perceived object, an object that one is not uh, cognizing. Through one's sensory faculties. So the first offerings to the Buddha's body, second offerings to the stupas, third offerings to a perceived object, and fourth offerings to a, a, a non perceived object. So these are the first four. Chubo <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so then it goes on to say offerings made for the sake of the Buddha to one or more images and stupas uh, after uh, his nirvana are considered offerings to a non-perceived object. So here, uh, if one is making offerings uh, um, uh, uh, of a stupa uh, after the Buddha has passed into nirvana, Uh, if we go to Bodhagaya, uh, the stupa was created and there's a statue of the Buddha's body inside of it. Uh, and, and this is made as an offering to the Buddha. Um, because the Buddha is not present, um, uh, then this is an offering to a non-perceived object. So that's the meaning of the words contained within here, is that when one is uh, making offerings, for the, it says, for the sake of the Buddha, or to the, for, for the Buddha, or making offerings to the Buddha, 
uh, and then it's by, uh, um, and it, it's doing it uh, uh, in thinking like to the act of the Buddha, then one is making uh, an offering to a non-perceived object because these offerings are being made to an object that one isn't perceiving. So if one is offering an, a stupa or making offerings of a statue uh, and so forth, making some kind of an offering of an image to the Buddhas, uh, or, or then this becomes an unperceived object because the Buddha that you're offering to isn't being perceived uh, even though the, um, uh, the, these things one is offering or the consecrated uh, stupas and so forth are perceived. The object of the offering isn't perceived, which is the Buddha. I'm sorry to use so many words, but I wanted to make it clearer, uh, um, just clarify. <laughs> Let's Teacher, Mimato Mimatun Chibi <laughs> And Okay. Uh, so then I, um, it goes on to say, uh, when you make offerings to either an unperceived Buddha or his unperceived stupas, you also make offerings to both of the perceived object, for the reality or emptiness of them is the reality of all of them. So I was asking, uh, okay, uh, let me go through this first so I don't forget. Um, so when you make offerings to uh, uh, a perceived Buddha or a not perceived Buddha, uh, they are both the same nature. Uh, both, uh, they are the Buddha. So the perceived Buddha has the same nature as the unperceived Buddha. And likewise, the perceived stupa has the same nature as the unperceived stupa. They're both stupas, they're both Buddhas in this case. Um, so, uh, because they have the same nature, uh, um, uh, um, it says, uh, um, 
you, you are also making offerings to both of the perceived objects. It says, when you make offerings to either an unperceived object or his uh, unperceived stupas, you are also making offerings to both of the perceived objects because they are the same nature. Uh, the Buddha's uh, perceived Buddha and the not perceived Buddha is the same nature and the perceived stupa and the not perceived stupa is the same nature. So you're simultaneously, when you're making uh, an offering to the unperceived, you're simultaneously making it to the perceived because of the same nature. Then I asked Rinpoche about this question of the emptiness of the one is the reality of them all. And then the consequence is that, it, then you could say then, uh, then there's no difference between the tenet systems. Um, because the lack of true establishment of the Great Exposition School and the lack of true establishment of the Satrantika School and the lack of true establishment of the Mind Only School and the lack of true establishment of the Middle Way School makes it so they're all the same nature, so there's no difference between them. Um, and then we, we would say that, uh, um, that there is a difference uh, between them. Um, and then you would say that the, the hearer's vehicle, the solitary realizer vehicle, the bodhisattva vehicle, uh, they're all not truly established, but we don't say that they are the same because they are all empty. We say that they are the lineage of the hearer, the lineage of the solitary realizer, and the lineage of the bodhisattva, and these are different. Uh, so Rinpoche said, uh, perhaps uh, this, is not, uh, this is an incorrect way. Uh, to, to look at it, um, perhaps, he said, uh, perhaps an incorrect way uh, to look at it. Um, because if we say that uh, this is what makes them uh, the same, then it, there's a consequence to that when we start to apply it to other things. That it, because if it's empty, it's all the same, then there becomes a consequence to that. And, and so anyway, when you make offerings to either an unperceived Buddha or his unperceived stupas, you are also making offerings to both of the perceived object, for the reality or emptiness of one of them is the reality of all of them. Uh, so Rinpoche used the nature of them. is the same. They're, they're the same nature. Less so when we read, we can read this in these two ways. Uh, so if you read it, uh, you are also making offerings to both of the perceived objects for the reality or emptiness of one of them is the reality of them all. So we could say uh, they are all uh, the unperceived uh, um, Buddha and the unperceived uh, stupa and the perceived Buddha and the perceived stupa are all not truly established because of dependent origination. So we could, we could uh, um, look at this and interpret it in that way, um, but there is a problem with that. So it's better to interpret it in the way that we say that the un unperceived Buddha and the perceived Buddha are of the same nature. Uh, they are both Buddhas. The unperceived uh, um, stupa and the perceived stupa are of the same nature because they're both stupas. Um, by saying they're of the same nature because they are not truly established, because they dependently originate, uh, then causes a trouble. And it's better to say because they are the same nature, and the same nature meaning because they're the same. An unperceived Buddha and the perceived Buddha are both a Buddha. Tu Chena. Ya chaba mudi ondele san tangore. Tu son ju sanje thaje tans. Tu son thaje tu son ju sanje thaje tans. Nebe sanje maom bu sanje tata ju sanje thaje tans. Shoot 
çocuğu ben bir çocuğu durum oluyor orada. Tadam ben 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 de la ha. Tadam ben ben bir çöden la ya. Çocuğu tadam ben 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 çöden yoru. Çöden samalaya çöğü yiyin yani. Mesela. Diyor sonucu sadece da çocuğu tadam ben ben bir çöden tadil çöpen bir gün. Sanlı da ne çöpen bir bey yine çöpen ne? Ngadu chuma ju, ngadu chubi chuba re, ngadu ma chubi chuba re, ni kares. Lasa. Si chuba te, si chuba te, haman suna suna cha chala, ni ban te yu jang cha chwa ta, suna ban te yu jang shi tu cha chwa suna be sa. Suna ji kwa tan chwa ten chuba be be yi na, suna chuba re, ngasun chuba te, ngasun ma yu chuba be na, Sonra çabırız. Nasıl? Şurcu düğün sonucu, düğün sonucu sancı tanıcı ediyor. Şurcu tanıdı, meme bir, çöteyle, çöte oynayan bir, çöpe bir bir yine, o da çöğünle çeşit ederiz. Çeşit. O da sonucu varız. Okey. O da düğün sonucu var. Nasıl? 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 Düğün sonucu Uh, it says it is standard to make offerings both to perceived and non-perceived objects uh, with the thought I make offerings to all the Buddhas of the three times and to the stupas of the ten directions of limitless universe. It is said uh, that making offerings to a perceived object produces a vast store of merit and making offerings to an unperceived object a greater store. Making offerings to all the Buddhas and stupas produces a store far more vast than that. Um, uh, so. Uh, here, uh, it's saying that uh, when one is making an offering, uh, it is standard to make offerings both to perceived and non-perceived objects. So if one is making an offering to a perceived object, uh, then, uh, then one would think, I make offerings to all the Buddhas of the three times and to the stupas of the ten directions of, this, of the limitless universe. So the Buddhas of the three times. So all the Buddhas of the past, all the Buddhas of the present, all the Buddhas of the future and all the stupas uh, in the ten different directions uh, um, uh, uh, of, the lim of the whole entire universe, or the ca countless or immeasurable universe. Uh, so, all to, um, so when one is making, it says it is making offerings to a perceived object pr produces a vast store of merit. Uh, so one is getting a, a, a vast, um, a great amount of merit by making an offering to a perceived object and making offerings to an unperceived object a greater store. Making offerings to all the Buddhas and, and stupas produces a, a store far more vast than that. So when one is making an offering um, uh, to, uh, uh, to a perceived object, for instance, one is imagining that he or she is making offerings to uh, unperceived objects simultaneously. Uh, because when one is, when does so, uh, it increases the merit. There's a great amount of merit of, of, of making offerings to a perceived object, uh, a, a greater short store of merit uh, to making it uh, offerings to an unperceived object. Uh, and then uh, it says, uh, and, uh, but making offerings to all the Buddhas and stupas produces a far more vast than that. So object or objects. Uh, so here uh, we find um, uh, uh, um, singular words, uh, making offerings to a perceived object or an unperceived object and then making offerings to multiple objects. Uh, so that when we make offerings uh, to all the Buddhas and stupas, it creates the greatest amount of merit. So uh, this is how one would, could simultaneously make offerings to a perceived object, perceiving an object, and then simultaneously uh, 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 making offerings to the unperceived object of all of the Buddhas uh, and all of the stupas. Uh, um, uh, at the same time. Uh, so this, this uh, uh, way of making an offering to all creates the greatest amount of, of merit. Kaman suna jachalas, kaman chua suna sanji chukko tan chuetnen li chua bat de dhamu ji, dhamu ni de. Sanji chukko tan chuetnen li chua bat de suna chua res, kaman suna jachalas, ni ban te yu jachalas. Ngasun tu chua bat de dhamu ji, Nasıl mayın çöpe değil de bana be. Değil de dile cahı çıkarız. Sonra bak de, Düğün sonucu sadece daha, Şurcu tanı meme bir çöpe değil. Çöpe doğun yani çöpe ne? Nasıl çöpe değil de ki çöpe değil. O da dile cahı çıkarız. O da cahı kusurlu olgu mu de. Tambo. Tamam. Sadece kutan, 
Kedin çöpet suna cacı buruz, tamı nedir o? Lesev. Ne be nedir? Nasıl çöp bir çöpet o? Nasıl macı bir çöpet nedir bana be? Nika. Ne be suna cacı buruz? Nasıl çöp bir çöpet o? Nasıl çöpet o? Nasıl çöpet o? Nika yemek. Jedir o, jedir. Tamı ne suna çöp buruz? Ne be? Ne be nedir suna çöp buruz? Jedir o suna. Ta suna bada loka cümle oldu o. Tüyüsünce sonucu tanıcı etti. Şurcu tanıdan memeye bir çöteyle çöte o yani çöpe ne? Nasıl da çöpe acı ne ki çöpe deyiz? Nasıl da çöpe çöpe arı? Nasıl da çöpe çöpe arı? De sonra şeyde cacı buluruz. Sonra cacı çöpe deriz. De ne oldu? Tamam kanka düzenleyici orada. Tüyüsünce sonucu tanıcı etti ha? Şurcu Mümme bi, çöten layan çöten o yani çöpe bir bir yapın yine. Ngodu çöpe bir şey çöpe arayız, ngodu çöpe bir çöpe arayız, ngodu macı bir çöpe arayız. Ngodu çöpe bir çöpe de denen zöylüyü arayız, ngodu macı bir çöpe de denen zöylüyü arayız. Ngodu macı bir çöpe de sanam çöpe. Çeşiyor mu? Çeşiyor mu? Tambo. で、エンジケで田んぼで無数で、ママ、そのジャッチラス、ママで、ママそのジャッチラスやで、30個の蝶ば、蝶電の蝶ば2枚ば、ちょっとの田んぼに。エンジンの勝てる。せめか、せめ
so uh, the, um, the singular of uh, so so this is the the meaning of this section. If I I've missed anything, I apologize, but I don't think I did. I think I have it. Decent. Commerce Tamate Okay. Somebody Chutan, Ale. The 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 gua chupa than chorten la chupa. The chupa ni the musun de chupa yimba yo maribe. Gangisin the NGK the 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 musun de the musun de chupa the gua chupa than chorten chupa yin. Gula chupa the chorten chupa the musun de chupa chupa the maju ni yon. Lasso. Gula chupa chorten chupa tamani yi. Lasso. Then then okay. Then chapagare, gang is in the gula chupa dang chup chorten la chupa ngun the musun du chupa yure. Kula chupa dung chorten la chupa sana tambaro. Kula chupa de la kutan chwede ngosun tuni chupa chi dang. Matun Chuba 
Go a chupa. 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 Go a Okay. Uh, so when we look at the, um, I, I'm just having, I'm having trouble with this clarification of a subtle point. I'll explain it right now. Uh, so here when we find these, these points that are made, uh, and we find this quote, it says that, uh, um, it is said that making offerings to a perceived object produces a vast store of merit and making offerings to an unperceived merit, perceived object, a greater store. Uh, making offerings to all the Buddhas uh, and stupors produces a, a store far more vast than that. I'll have to go back to the Tibetan another time uh, and look through it. Um, but Rinpoche is saying that uh, the first level of uh, store of merit, the smallest store of merit, is gained from making offerings to the Buddha's body uh, and offerings to the stupas. Uh, and Rinpoche said, at this point, there isn't an explanation or a talk about perceived object or unperceived object. Uh, so at this point, these offerings are, these first two make up the point which is the smallest level of virtue. The next uh, point, offerings to perceived object and offerings to a non-perceived object. Uh, here, uh, there are four points. There are offerings to a perceived object that is a Buddha or a stupa, and offerings to an unperceived object that is a Buddha or a stupa. Um, so these perceived and unperceived objects, which there are four of when we look categorically, would fall, making offerings to the them, would fall categorically under the medium level of merit. Uh, and then the greatest level of merit, making offerings to all unperceived and perceived objects, which are the Buddhas of the three times and all the stupas uh, in the universe. Uh, so my question was, uh, there is an, a perceived, the perceived, uh, the first Buddha uh, making offerings to the body, there's, that's a perceived object, so why is there a difference? And I, Rinpoche said, because it hasn't been, the unperceived and perceived object points haven't been made yet, so categorically they fall into the commentary in that way. Um, so if if it's not clear, I'll look further into the Tibetan and the English that's translated, because it, it seems a little bit slightly different, but the commentary Rinpoche is giving, I'm clear, clear that he's saying that the first two go into the small category, the next two, which are four, go into the uh, uh, medium category, and then making offerings of a, a union of them uh, go into the great category, which is making offerings to, to all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, etc. Um, and just as a quick point, just to end here, I looked up this quote from the Exhortation to Wholehearted Resolved, and we were going through this line about that such arrogance is the root of all unruliness. Um, the translations I found, this word arrogance, uh, haughtiness, is usually used for this word. Uh, it doesn't fall under the category. It's not the same as pride. It's a secondary affliction. There are six root afflictions and 20 secondary afflictions. Haughtiness falls under the, cate the secondary category. Uh, and just as a note, we were trying to distinguish pride necessarily has the view of the transitory collection uh, as, as being the I and establishing the eye uh, and becoming prideful because one is puffed up about the qualities that the eye possesses. And then the, the haughtiness is the uh, um, um, development of a joy when one thinks about uh, the, the excellent qualities of one's appearance and so forth. But there isn't this same emphasis on the view of the transitory collection. Uh, so this is what I found out in researching these. I promised that I would. And this the root of unruliness um, uh, unconscientiousness is another way to translate it. So haughtiness is the root of not being conscientious. Uh, so I said I would look these words up, and, and, and I did, uh, and those are the meanings. And uh, we're done. Uh, we are at the end, so we'll do the concluding model offering and dedication prayer. Two chanter rim che sheda sopa. Nama the the nyomo the the chapa ne the sopa lama so ne ne sopa lasso. Okay. So we'll do the concluding mandala offering and dedication prayer. The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers. 
adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings and of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozandrapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In that pure land surrounded by snowy mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. All powerful Avogateshvara, Tenzin Yatso, may you stay until samsara's end. I pray for the long life of the precious Kensa Wandok, upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, the spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts with exceptional wisdom and perseverance.